Hi, welcome back to Tiny Garage Fabrication. Today we're back to work on the Eagle Talon TSI. We're going to fix a clutch issue that I've been having. It's actually with the pedal itself. It's a very common problem on these DSMs. Now we're going to work on some interior mods, uh, mostly just the headliner and the sun visors. Going to do custom upholstery on that stuff. Get it looking kind of with a nicer look and maybe just a little bit of early 90s vibe. So, let's turn to now, There's plenty of guides online that tell you how to get these clutch pedals out. I will tell you it is an absolute pain in the butt. You can see I pulled the steering column completely out and the big key is completely removing the clutch master cylinder as well as the brake master cylinder and booster. Those have to come off the firewall or this thing will never come out. I promise you that. Alright, so I'm going to try to demonstrate what went wrong with my clutch pedal here. Uh, I've got everything set up on my welding table. I know parts are kind of strange looking, but clutch pedal over here and over here is the clutch actuator Z rod now it needs to push this way and here's basically what went wrong so you can see I'm moving the clutch pedal so I'm moving the clutch pedal over here but the Z rod is not moving at all so I'm practically halfway down on my throw so I've got you know two inches of so my travel and now it finally moves all right now it's it's going pretty hard because there's no pressure from a master cylinder going back there so you can tell I've got to I've got to move it quite a bit before it ever gets to moving any any master cylinder. So that's the issue right there, and I'll show you what went wrong. And after disassembling the Z rod, you can see right here that. What's supposed to be just a regular slot is now this weird kind of hourglass shape and that's what allows it to rotate on that pin. Now there's just a plastic bushing in here that keeps the rod centered in the assembly. So I upgraded to this brass bushing that I found uh, at Extreme PSI. Go ahead and cinch everything down. Spraying a little bit of cooling gel here just to help keep that brass bushing from getting deformed as I get this thing super hot with welding. And just burn the Z-Rod to the pin. Now you can kind of see what gets welded together there. A little bit more cooling gel, a little bit more welding. And this thing is just about good to go. And here we go on the bench and watch the rod. As soon as I push on the pedal, that Z-Rod moves, which is exactly how it's supposed to be. So while I had the brake booster and the clutch master cylinder out of the way, it was convenient for me to get to my AC compressor. And so I changed it, and I also changed the dryer and the expansion valve in the evaporator. And so to do that, I had to rip the entire dash apart, and I'm glad I did because this is all just mouse turds and all kinds of things inside my blower motor. Imagine if I had turned that on, it would have blew that stuff through all my vents, all over my face and my car. Super glad I took that out to rebuild the AC. Now I laid the patch panel that I cut out of the parts car that I got in the last video. I laid that over the floor, and I spray painted around the edges, and it gave me a perfect template of where to cut. So now I'm cutting this rusty old junk out of here so that I can weld in the patch panel from the other car. After grinding the paint off of the welding area, just go ahead and start tack welding it in then go slow with tacks spaced every couple of inches to keep warping to a minimum and get this thing all burned in. Give you a ride. Give me some fuel for the fire. Now I didn't notice till I was going through the footage that I had started part of the firewall on fire and I'm glad it didn't get out of control. However you can see in this still footage Right behind me there is a fire bottle, it's that silver tank right there. So I was protected and I didn't have to use it. It just goes to show how quickly things can get out of control when you're welding. You know you're focused, you got the blinders with that hood on. 
and, and stuff can go bad quick. So just be careful, people. Now it's fully welded in place. I applied fresh seam sealer to the back side and paint on both sides and time to send it. I pulled the headliner out and you can see how incredibly flimsy the material was. It's just shredded and, and ripping right off of this visor. It was the same for the entire headliner. Now these visors are two piece. They just kind of open up the fabric is just folded around the edges. The vanity mirror clips in place. Pull that off. Between you and me. Use the headliner to get a general idea of the size of fabric I needed. Lay it down and then use some of this 3M90 contact adhesive. Uh, 90 is about the only thing that you should use for a headliner. It withstands a lot of heat. It's got a great amount of hold as long as you apply it right. So you apply it to one part and then you apply it to the other part. And then you wait for it to kind of dry a little bit. And then as soon as you press the parts together, they stick pretty good. With it just laying on itself, it doesn't really stick. You have to like press it together. As you can see there, it was starting to form and stick pretty good. Trim the slack, make some relief cuts to get everything in place, add some more glue, and fold it over. All right, well, this is how it looks now. I'm gonna have to stop for a minute because I'm sweating all over the thing, and it's really not helping me out much, but you see that's how the relief cuts are, you just kind of push it up in the corner, fold it over. I'm going to have to work on this back part just a little bit more and figure out how much of that gets covered by the mechanism. And I still need to cut out the hole right here and then wrap the hole outside. But so far so good. It's going to look pretty nice. There we go, we've got the headliner all wrapped up. Still got to cut the holes in the corners for the visors the light fits inside that pocket so it's not trimmed perfectly sunroof the latch for the sunroof fits in that pocket and let's take a look at the back so on pieces like this you got to make a lot of relief cuts around everywhere as i did here even all across the front edge because it's got a curve to it but it's pretty easy stuff I'll show the process a little more in depth with the sun visors themselves. Select your fabric, make sure it doesn't have any junk in it. Lay out your piece and begin to spray your glue on both sides. And like I said, you need to wait some time for this to tack up, so do whatever you gotta do while you wait. And as soon as it's not sticky to the touch, it will stick to itself really well. Apply the glue to the other side, wait for it to dry, and stick it together when it's ready. Now that it's stuck together, go ahead and trim the excess, and then begin making all the relief cuts around the outsides where it needs to curve around the corners. Using a razor blade to slot the little holes where the mirror needs to slide through. Go ahead and cut that, get it clipped in place, and move on to the next part. For the rest of this I'm not using the same glue, I'm going to use this contact cement and the reason why is it has a little bit more holding power. This Weldwood contact cement works really well. Barge is another good contact cement that you can use. And like the spray adhesive, apply it to both sides. Wait for it to dry. This stuff takes a little bit longer. I did apply it fairly thick. Now 
and once it dries up some then fold the cloth over and then I'm going to reapply more adhesive to the folded sections that will touch once I close this thing back on itself. I use binder clips to hold it all together while that glue dries. Took about an hour or so. Remove the clips and enjoy your freshly upholstered sun visor. feels good to have pretty much everything on this car all put together uh, ready to start driving it got a few more small faults to fix and we'll get to those eventually but I'm pretty much putting this series on hold right now because we need to get back to the Datsun 620 some of the next videos coming out will be about that give me a couple of weeks we'll get something cranked out by Thanksgiving 2020 give or take as always subscribe leave a comment share these videos and that's all I got for today thanks for watching